Hey guys, what's up? It's Iflin here, and today I'm going to show you guys how to farm Excalibur in Warframe. Now, long-term viewers of the channel may be like, Flynn, you've already made a video covering how to get Excalibur, but like I say in a lot of my videos, Warframe is forever changing, and the drop location for Excalibur was actually changed, so now he drops on Mars, on the boss there, called uh, Lieutenant Lich Krill, instead of dropping on Pluto. So now Trinity drops on Pluto, and Frost now drops on Ceres, so... Yeah, a little bit confusing, but that's besides the point. These videos are going to be remade on the channel to kind of complement Beginner's Guide 2018 because I'm hoping on working on that relatively soon. I don't know whenever all the big updates are going to be coming out, like the melee changes or the sacrifice, but I want to wait for those to come out, and then I want to get straight in with making Beginner Guides 2018 so then you guys are kind of up to date with... um you know how the game works and you can help other players get into the game and just kind of learn things that you may have not known about the game because of the you know the past year and all the changes and stuff like that because there was a lot of changes this year in terms of like weapons and stuff so um yeah i'm gonna be breaking down how to farm excalibur in this video and uh just basically doing it like as close to the newer player experience as possible so uh, if you are completely unaware, to get a Warframe for entirely free, meaning you don't have to spend any money or any platinum, you can actually craft it by going and buying a blueprint and then farming up the parts for it, right? So to buy the blueprint, that's kind of the first step. You want to go ahead and go up to your market. And then in the top left-hand corner, typing in the name of the Warframe that you want to get. So most frames, you're able to just straight up buy the blueprint. Other frames, you're going to have to play a quest to get, okay? So quest frames are the likes of Octavia or Haro or Gara, where most of the general frames like Excalibur, Frost, Mag, etc., you can just kind of get their blueprints from, you know, the market or maybe the Tenno Lab or, or something like that. So you type in Excalibur. You go ahead, you click on the Warframe, and then you click this little build icon, the little blue one, which is the credits, and then you can purchase the blueprint right here. Now, you can see that it also says um, crafting requirements. So, you, you see that it needs 25,000 credits, an Excalibur chassis, Excalibur inner optics, Excalibur system, and one Oricon cell. On top of that, the 35,000 credits that it cost to actually buy this blueprint. So... Our job is to get those credits, get those free parts, and get that work and sell so we can put them together, and then we can craft our Excalibur Warframe. Now, the Excalibur Warframe takes three days to build, and then all of these other parts, you're going to have to craft those as well, and they'll take a day to build each. So, we go ahead, we purchase it. I'm not going to purchase it because I already own Excalibur. And then our job is to go ahead and farm the boss that drops the Excalibur parts, right? So before we do that, what I want to recommend is a few mod loadouts and basically weapons that I recommend taking into the boss, right? Right. So in this video, I'm using Vault because Vault is the Warframe that I recommend to all New Year players this year because Excalibur is really easy to get, Mag is really easy to get, and Vault is the most expensive out of those free starter frames. So picking up Vault is good for the people who want to like, you know, play in the long run and get everything. So on Vault... These are the mods that I would kind of run. We have Streamline on here, which is going to make it so that our abilities cost less to cast. We have Continuity, so our abilities last a longer period of time. Flow for more maximum energy, and then Vitality for more maximum health. Now, this is not the perfect build by any means, but this is a build that I can realistically see newer players getting. If you don't have the, you know, completely maxed out version of a mod like Streamline, for example, if you only have the broken version, that's fine. Just kind of re replicate this build, have these mods on, and then, you know, throw on other stuff to kind of help yourself out as well as a newer player. These are just the mods that I recommend that will definitely help you out in this fight. These are kind of the, the staple mods, right? So I'm, I'm using the broken versions of some mods as well just to kind of demonstrate to you guys that, yes, this can be done with the broken version of mods. So, yeah, so this is the build that I would run in my vault. The aura mod doesn't really matter too much. As long as you can fit all of these mods on, you should be good to go, okay? So moving on from that, I'm using the Boltor Assault Rifle. Now, the reason you're using this rifle is because it is a high-end puncture, which means it's good versus armored targets, which is the majority of the Grenier faction, which is what we're going to be fighting against. So this weapon, you can get the blueprint from the, I believe it is the Mercury Junction, right after you complete Venus. So you can get that really early on, and you don't actually have to buy the blueprint. You just get it given to you, and then you just have to craft it. 
And then this is the build that I would recommend running on uh, this rifle. Now, the reason I'm recommending elemental mods and uh, serration, just these free mods, is because I want to demonstrate that you don't have to have like the best build ever to kill this boss, right? You can do it pretty easy. And it also lets me explain damage a little bit better to you guys as well. So serration is on here to bump up the base stats of our main free damage type. So the main free damage types in Warframe is impact, puncture, and slash. And you add those free numbers together, and that's going to give you your weapons total damage in the ideal scenario. So then after you throw on serration to increase your damage even further, you want to throw on elemental mods and the reason you throw on elemental mods over anything like um, IPS mods is because elemental mods are going to take 90% of those free numbers impact puncture and slash added together and then it's going to add that on top so if you have your toxin mod on here it takes 90% of impact puncture slash added together and then gives you that in the form of toxin damage and because we have stormbringer right beside an infected clip it actually gives us corrosive damage and it takes another 90% from those mods or those uh, damage values added together and it adds that on top which gives us our 63 corrosive damage so what i would recommend is it's usually better to have one elemental combo over no elemental combo even if it's the wrong elemental combo so that's a lot to take in but there is actually like wrong elemental combos that you can mod or just wrong elements that you can mod for because they'll actually make it so that you deal less damage like an enemy might have a 25 percent resistance to frost which means that 25 percent of your damage whenever you're shooting an enemy is actually going to be deducted from the total damage right so that's bad and you want to make sure that you're modding for the weaknesses of the enemy so in this case armored enemies are weak to corrosive damage some armored enemies are weak to radiation damage and those are the two elemental combos that i recommend running so you can make corrosive by combining infected clip and stormbringer or you can make radiation by combining uh, infected clip and hellfire right pretty straightforward at least in my opinion so keep this all in mind because this is going to you're going to see a trend right between all of the weapons all of the builds are very very similar right so this is your rifle build. Then if you move on to your secondary, your Sonicore, which is a kind of difficult secondary weapon to craft, but it's more of a utility weapon for this fight because you can use it to basically make it go a little bit faster, right? So the Sonicore, you build this the exact same way you would um, build your Warframe, except you don't have to farm parts. You just have to farm resources. You go to the market, you type in Sonicore, and then you purchase the blueprint and you craft it. The two resources that you're going to struggle with are Oxium and Argon uh, crystals. So you can get Oxium from Phobos and you can get Argon crystals from the Void. What I recommend is doing a defense mission in either of those uh, planets to farm up the resources that you need because defense missions, a flat number of enemies spawn in and the faster you're killing the enemies, the quicker you're, of course, farming those parts, right? Or those resources. So... Oxium is a little bit more difficult because only a certain enemy drops them, the Oxium Ospreys. You can force spawn those in uh, spy missions by triggering the alarms. So if you trigger the alarms, sometimes an Oxium Osprey is going to spawn in in certain vaults, which can make it so that you can farm that Oxium a little bit more efficiently as a near player. But that's, of course, some weird veteran tactic that I just kind of find because of how much time I have in the game. It's just something weird that I know. But having this weapon is going to make the fight a lot easier. So... If you remember our rifle build, this is more or less the same. You have your Hornet Strike to increase your base damage, so in this case our impact damage, and then you throw on your elemental combo, which is your Convulsion and your Pathgen Rounds, which is basically more or less the same thing as our Infected Clip and Stormbringer, right? They just have different names and they're four different weapon types. So it's pretty much the exact same build, and then that's cool. Again, if you don't have, um, you know, Pathgen Rounds or Convulsion or whatever, any elemental combo is better than no elemental combo because it's going to increase your base damage, right? So it's adding all of those numbers over here together. So having at least one elemental combo on is better. I recommend Crucive or Radiation. And I, like I said, uh, Crucive is made by combining Electric and Toxin. And then Radiation is made by combining uh, Toxin and Fire. Okay, so Heat it Charge or Hellfire. So moving on from that, you have your Scanner, which is hopefully what you choose at the beginning of the game which is giving you pressure point, which is going to increase your base stats, fury for your attack speed, and then your elemental combo again. So it's pretty much the same thing over and over and over again. Uh, it's just increasing those base damage stats and then throwing on your elemental combo to make the fight very easy. So 
What you want to do now, head up to your navigation, go to Mars and click on War and start this mission. So what we want to be doing is we want to be running through this mission as fast as possible to sort of maximize the, um, the time spent, right? So the faster we can get the runs done, then the faster we're going to get all the parts. You want to be running this, well... If you're unlucky, you'll have to run this about 32 times to get all three of the parts as the chassis and the optics share an equal drop chance of, I think, 32%. And then the system has a, or the systems has a drop chance of about 28%. So the systems is by, by far the rarest part. And that is the case with most Warframes. Whenever you're farming their parts, the systems is usually always the rarest because it follows that trend of 32, 32, 28 so don't worry too much if you don't get the systems like i said i think it is a total of 32 runs to guarantee a drop of all three of those parts at least once so that's if you're very unlucky you could easily play this three times in a row and then get all the uh the part blueprints that you need right so we're just running past all the guys not getting caught on wires <laughs> and then uh, we're going to be spawning the boss should be spawning now so here's his little intro cinematic He's a pretty ugly dude, and you can also deal no damage to him. So what you have to do to deal damage to this guy, you actually end up hitting me with that little freeze blast there. You have to break the pipes that you can see on his back. So you see how he has pipes on his back? We want to break those. So what you may want to do is go ahead and turn off the alarms so not a lot of enemies spawn in. So you can kill anyone that's kind of sneaking up on you or whatever. And then what's going to happen is this guy is going to try to chase you, get the aggro on yourself. And then what you want to be doing is using the sonic core to break the pipes on his back. Now, the reason that we were, we were using the sonic core is because it's actually an explosive weapon. So you can just shoot it over his head and then that's going to burst the pipe. So instead of you having to run behind him and then shoot him, you just shoot that sonic core over his head. Now, what we're doing is we're beating out that little hammer slam attack that he just did there. Okay, so run up to him, run close to him. He's going to do that hammer slam attack and then implying that the pipe is burst. That's going to make him freeze himself. So you just rinse and repeat that process another three times. So you got to do it a total of four times. Beat out the slam. Please. There you go. And then we just keep on doing that until all the pipes are burst. Once all the pipes are burst, then we're going to be able to damage him. So I'm going to keep cover in this little rim here because it's the CFS. Let's just go ahead and break the pipe again. And then we want to break, break or break. Break. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying trying to say here we're trying to beat out the slam so there we go and then we have to break one more one more pipe there you go and that's not what i wanted you to do do a slam there we go so now what's going to happen is he's going to go from his ice mode into a fire mode so what you're going to do before he comes back is place down five volt shields run around a little bit and then ship through your shields to damage the guy of course you want to be aiming for your headshots because headshots are going to make it so you deal more damage so he's actually kind of stuck in place like the ai is is very dumb he doesn't know what to do and then that's the boss killed we actually got a rare mod drop energy channel nothing special it's a pretty lackluster mod but shooting through these vault shields is actually going to apply 125 more electric damage to your shots and that stacks up to five times so five times 125 is the amount of damage that you're going to be dealing whenever you're shooting through those five shields Plus, uh, your crit damage is also amplified by 200%, but that only happens uh, once. Like, that uh, effect doesn't increase with the amount of shields you have down. So, yeah, you know, you can deal a lot of damage with Vault. And running around makes that little counter in the top right-hand corner. That's going to go up, and then your next shot is going to deal uh, bonus damage equal to the amount that you've built up. That's Vault's passive. So, it's just kind of like a, a static charge that you build up by walking around. So... You can see once we complete the mission, we're going to get uh, the Neuroptics Blueprint. So what you want to be doing is rerunning that mission until you get the Chassis and the Systems Blueprint, right? So uh, like I said, they're not guaranteed drops and you may have to run this up to like 30 plus times to guarantee like all of those um, parts blueprints dropping once. But once you get all the parts blueprints, go down into your foundry here. Type in the frame that you want to build, and then you want to go ahead and craft the parts. So just by spending the resources. Again, I would recommend building uh, all three of them at the same time. That way you can claim all three of them and then start the build because these are going to take 12 hours. So just leave it on overnight 
uh, and then you want to start crafting your warframe because that's going to take three days to build in your foundry. But other than that, once you get all three part blueprints, that is basically it. That is how you farm Excalibur in Warframe. The next two how-to videos are going to be how to farm Frost and how to farm Mag. And like I said, these videos are being made to complement the Beginner's Guide 2018. Going a little bit more in-depth with... Um, just basically things that I cover in that guide and showing people how to do things and why I recommend certain things uh, over the other, right? So that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed the video, guys, go ahead and hit that like button below. If you want to see more Warframe content from me, hit subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.